Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, April 21st, 2024, and welcome to Comes Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, season 16, episode number eight of our little podcast here. For those of you that haven't joined us before, my name's Gary, and with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone, it's Damon. Welcome. Enjoy. And in this episode, we are going to be discussing the last three episodes of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race here, the flagship U.S. season. Booked and Blessed, Lip Sync, Smackdown Reunion, and the finale. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure we have lots to say. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, for those of you that have been listening and or watching, thanks for returning. We did say that we were probably going to be delayed and coming back just because of the lineup of uh, the weeks and schedules mm. and things. So with that being said, should we jump right in? Let's jump right in. Okay. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. Oh, by the way, oh, I noticed oh, oh, oh. arm. <laughs> <laughs> you noticed it, didn't you? It's like right here now. It's like on almost almost like I'm telling like, you, Mama's got a torn rotator cuff or something. Like she does mm. not lift that left arm for nothing anymore. It is it is no longer a ninety degree parallel like at yeah. at the top of the thing. It is never it is not here. It is here. It's I don't like know here. what that story is. Well, I mean, she is old. Uh oh <laughs> So Yeah, there's that. Um so with I mean, that being guess. said, uh, this is put the pedal to the metal. This is the first segment where we kind of talk about our thoughts in three uh, particular kind of groupings. So we have serves, swerves, and nerves. Serves are the positive. Swerves are the hazards that in this ra race you should have probably avoided. And then the nerve could be really, really goddamn good. Or girl, what the fuck were you thinking? Oh. Uh. So with that being said, Damon, what are you giving serves actually, for? I'm going to, well, yeah, we'll do this. So I'm going to actually give serves to the show mm -hmm. um, for an actual top three. Mm -hmm. No, like, you know, top fives, no top fours, no, like, all this shit that has happened so often that kind of gets a little annoying. Like, we go through a whole episode and we get to a, you know, a lip sync for your life and, oh, we're they're both saved, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, that. There was an actual elimination. Mm -hmm. um, and was it, did it hurt a little bit? Yeah, I will I will admit, um, mostly because um, our little girl Q went home um, and mm -hmm. to, to say some tea, I don't feel like they were the ones that should have gone home. She was the one that should have gone home. Mm. Yeah. But anywho, that's beside the point. I'm just sort I'm of guess like the one that you thought should have gone home didn't win anyways. Correct. But right. But you know, it just in my mind, in my opinion, this is my opinion. Um I felt there was a better package on this side than on the other side. And yeah, yeah, that episode was kind of weird. But, just just but, in that, like, I think what was expected and what came out and like what the judges wanted and what they were looking mm -hmm. for, like right. Mm. And, and that the episode, the booked and blessed episode, I think was a weird thing. And the the weirdest part, and this is just me spitballing, we didn't get to hear their stories. Like, the whole point of them writing the book was that, oh, we're writing a book, and you're telling your stories. We got, like, the cover, and and that's – and then we got the, the interview, right. like, the podcast interview, but that was it. Well, and, and to be – right, on that point, um, it had been talked about on a couple of, like, recap-type, like, shows or podcasts where, where it was – really understood like like a lot of the episode like challenges they were probably told like come up with a title 
and give us two particular stories from your life Mm -hmm. because this is this is exactly what you would do if you were out promoting an actual book because we ain't got the time for you to actually write a book Um, right right fair so i agree like it like it was very parsed yeah like and put together in a in a very specific way agreed like they're not going to write a book like that's clearly like the case like the whole idea is like like clearly they're not going to write a whole fucking book because that's not this challenge that i mean right but the fact that we didn't hear we only got little bits and pieces of what the stories were about based on the interview Mm -hmm. and maybe some of the things that the judging panel said in regard when they were like being critiqued and that's kind of it i'm yeah right and and i just realized this is the type of challenge where i think they would have been from like some guidance Mm -hmm. and they didn't really get that but to be fair how many challenges do they really get any guidance on it's just like you're kind of thrown into it and either you figure it out or you know luck out or you don't so yes yeah. yeah Yeah. Anywho, that's just me. I did I but I overall I did enjoy that we did get an elimination and we did get a top three Mm -hmm. and it was a top three that went to the end and into the finale and then we had one person eliminating and we got a top two and I just I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was it's interesting having watched since the very beginning all the seasons. Mm-hmm. To see like the variations or iterations of this last couple episodes, and that they went in a different direction, yet it was a callback. Like they did things that have done before mm-hmm. in a different way, but modified. So yeah, it was it was interesting. But I hear you yeah, on the uh... like we had we had a final three, an actual final three. Mm-hmm. In that case. What about you? Um, baby, I thought the mini challenge of the Aqua Boogie, like the them <laughs> putting on like the swim thing and like and like quick drag and like the 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 camera under the clear box, mm-hmm. like with them lip syncing underwater type thing. I it was one of the most innovative mini challenges I've seen, I think, in years. That I was really super impressed by, like, the concept of it, yet the simplicity. Like, yeah, they had, like, a fake little above-ground pool. And it was mm-hmm. funny, because when they said you got, like, ten minutes to get into quick drag or whatever, and I was like, ooh, I don't think these girls are ready for that. Um, and I thought, like, they were actually going to get into water. Like, I was hearkening back to the season where they got in the fucking tank. And right, I was like, right. oh, no. Um, yeah. And then come to find out but, it's just this little box and you're just like shoving your face into the water. And there's a camera underneath and like you're lip syncing. So, yeah, I really loved it. Safira knocked it out of the park. Girl, <laughs> girl knew what she was doing the whole time. Yeah, like, she. Yeah, she, she them, clearly did it with them. Tiggo bitties just splashing in that water like that. She, yeah. And like. a wig cap reveal. <laughs> you know and then the best part was the shade at the very end when mama rue says and someone doesn't know my know the lyrics and yet that person won <clears throat> anyways so i'm just saying just saying so anyways, I thought I thought Aqua Boogie as a mini challenge was a lot of fun. I would love to see it come back. I think it's a cute idea. I do like it. I think it's a really cute idea. And I think it's something, it is less <laughs> hazardous than them, like, being dropped in a, in, a, in, a, in a tank. Far less hazardous than that. Ruining clothes and all that stuff. I like that it right. was literally just, like, face going in. Now... Me personally, I ain't doing it. Sorry, sorry, I can't. Like I, I'm I am someone who literally like holds their mouth closed and blows some air in their mouth and holds their nose when they're when they're like in a pool, um, going putting their head underwater. I I am that person, so right. that wouldn't be me. 
right. um, or it would look really weird and there would not be any fucking lip syncing. It would be a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But I, I do know that they put like, they had nose plugs. I do appreciate that. I, yeah. Some of them. Like I know Nymphia yes. for certain did nose plugs. I think it was an optional kind of thing, like whether you mm-hmm, wanted to do mm-hmm. this or not. So yeah, for sure. All right, so let's move on to swerves. Ooh, <laughs> my my my, this might be a spicy take. David, what do you what do you have a swerve for? Well, so I've been talking about Q. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Q, something that she said in. I think it was during the episode in me. I know it was during Untucked because I have it written down as under Untucked. Okay. It's, she said, um, deserve to win. Like, she deserved to win. She's put all this work in and yada, yada. No fault to Mama Q about all of the work you've done and everything. And kudos to you. But to me, personally, there is not a – no one is deserving to win. If that makes sense. Well, like, yeah. I mean, I would say I think it is obvious who – how do I want to phrase this? I think there are multiples of individuals that rise mm-hmm. to the top mm-hmm. that are deserving of the chance to win. Right. I guess that's a better way to phrase it because I hear you out. Yeah. Like, like yeah. the moment you said it, I was like, ooh, baby, that is some privilege speaking. Yes, and that's sort of where I felt it came from, and I was having, and uh, don't get me wrong, and I, and I love Q, and I appreciate her, but I feel like there's been a lot of this very privileged talk coming from her, and this was sort of like another nail in that coffin, as it were, for me, and I get it, like, drag is your life, you've kind of made it abundantly clear like you spend, it sounds like countless hours doing things, making outfits, mm-hmm. putting in the work, and that's great. And and props to you <laughs> for for all of that work that you're doing. Mm-hmm. But so are other queens. So are other people. So are other like you know right, you know right. people that have been in this show that are have been on this show and are that were in your season. Mm-hmm. It's not a it's not a deserving you know it's it's a like everyone that came into that workroom that 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 this season had an opportunity and each had a, a chance to potentially say to win to deserve to win and ultimately it is it comes down to hate to say it it comes down to what the producers and Ruth think like i know it sounds weird and i know it sucks and I know it's not something that people want to hear, but reality is this is a reality TV show. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, as much as we want everything to be hunky dory and the person that wins the most is the person that, you know, makes it to the end and the person that wins, that's that's never the case. Right. It's all off all almost always about story. And the, uh, um, not angle, but the arc that they can tell, like that's sort of what I feel happens with this show now. And I know it's not pretty, but that's just the way it is. But to think that you alone deserve it or deserve to be in the finale or deserve to win or what have you. I just, it just, it seems a little, well, blunt, self-centered. It, it, it speaks to me in a way that it says this person has not had setbacks in their life or Mm -hmm. has not lived through the setbacks to have a perspective in reflection about how those made them a better individual. Right. Like, like, to say that you're deserving of the win is like, ooh, girl, you should try some humble pie. Mm-hmm. I bet it's pretty tasty. Because that's right. not what I'm getting out of this, you know, that kind of a yeah. So, yeah, I hear you on that. Very much so. Yeah. So that's me. Okay. Get, oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you okay over there? I'm okay. 
We're going to talk about this girl a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so my swerve is Plane's character versus person. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. Plane tries to make has attempted in the season to make that they that their character is not who they are. Um I don't necessarily agree with that. Mm. I think who you present as a queen is who you are as a person because we never really got to see the person. Right. So prove yeah. me wrong, show me who you are. When the cameras aren't on, when you're not like trying to win the show or whatever, like it, it just, yeah, like I just and and the, so this narrative, this concept of like, she had a sort of an attempt at a redeeming moment, that she, um, you know, had a little breakdown and mm-hmm. you know that da 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 da. I was like, eh. Um, so. And and the thing is, is like she really went sideways in the podcast. Like, was given an opportunity to show herself. Like that was the concept of what the judges were looking for, and this is kind of where I have a criticism about this challenge that they didn't explain that. Like, while you are going as your drag persona. We are looking for the person behind the drag persona. Mm-hmm. Like that's the concept mm-hmm. of the interview. It's not about you being your your um, alternate. It's about you, mm-hmm. like with the facade of the alternate. And that right. wasn't really well explained. And that's why I think the other ones did well and got recognized in that direction. At least that's the way the edit shows the judging panel like feedback. So I was like, yeah, like it was really unfortunate that you kind of dug in and decided to go the direction that you did. And I feel like, therefore, I really don't know if there's a distinction between you as the person and your personality yeah. or your presentation of who you are as drag. Right. And it's funny, Jim and I, I was talking about this um, during the finale, because Plain tends to rely on humor in almost every situation that she's a part of. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there was this moment where her she her mom no it was during like the Rue and her kind of back and forth, and she asked. I think. Rue asked her what would winning mean to her, mm-hmm. and she talked about how it would be like the most prettiest and you know whatever you know one one and like that's not what we're asking here like i need you to like turn your character off for like 20 seconds right because all i get is plain jane the kooky right russian whore like to keep it simple right well i'm not we're getting your your produced Mm -hmm. self as opposed to your authentic self right and and that's what I feel is has been the issue for me in playing game in a while, for a while is that all I get is the the character right and even even out of drag I feel like you are constantly putting that character on and if we had had like a opportunity or a moment or several to where you revealed something to the effect of plane is my defense mechanism. Plane is my, like, you know, she helps me through all of the trauma or whatever that you're going through. Cause we barely scratched the surface. We had really one moment of weakness. Right. And I didn't see much else beyond that. And I think that's the worst, the sad part of it. Like, well, I've... and I, what my feeling is, Damon, is like you got as far as you could with your produced self, and production mm-hmm. was goddamn happy to have it. Like they were probably tickled pink that you were sticking to your narrative, to your concept, to what you were putting forward, but it only got you to where you, it got you. Right. And then that's it. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, you're going to be disappointed. A right. You're going to be disappointed that you didn't make it to the end, that you didn't even win. 
Yeah. But why should exactly. you? Exactly. Yeah. Because, and, and, and it's going to sound bad, but like, you didn't win. You didn't make it to the finale. And this is going to start with Plain Jane made it to the finale. Mm, that's fair. You get what I mean? Like, like no, it, I, that's what I, correct. yeah. But Plain Jane didn't make top two. No. Sorry, spoiler, but whatever. Y'all knew. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's fair. All right, so you ready to talk about Nerve? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, y'all. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Let's go. It appears we both have two. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so why don't we go back and forth? We'll go with your first Nerve, then mine, and then back to you, and then... We'll go there. Sounds good. Interesting. So, so what's, your first, what's your first nerve? I'm very intrigued. <laughs> I put down Maya 65%. Mm-hmm. So in the confessional, when they're back for the Lala Perusa SmackDown lip sync reunion, what yes. have you, one of the things she said was, um, where is it? There, she kind of wanted revenge against like morphine or whatever, because she only gave 65% in that lip sync against morphine. Okay, girl, sure. If you want to say that, if that's the narrative you want to play, then so be it. Because if that's your 65%, you pretty much gave 65% every time you were on that, on that stage. Like no Mm -hmm. shade to you, mama, actually full shade to you, mama. But like, if that was your 65%, I felt I, I, I didn't really feel much difference or change in a lot of what you did. You were kind of being a little shady bitch when you threw the threw the cape over her. You knew what you were doing. Don't give me that shit. You knew exactly what you were doing. And it just as someone who is the queen of flips and all of this stuff. To to be blunt, there is not a there's not been a lot of substance. So I kind of hate to say it, but once you see it enough enough times, you you're done. Like I don't I, the shock goes away. The shock value is gone. Mm-hmm. Like there she goes, do another flip. And mm-hmm. funnily enough, one of the moments I loved in her and Megami's lip sync, which I'll get to later is literally she Megami standing there and pulls her hand out and does a little thing and does a split down and that's exactly what she did like predicted her fucking split and I was like golden correct magnificent correct. yes correct yes 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 no that's fair I have a sneaking suspicion that statement was made as a way to save face mm-hmm because as we have apparently come to understand, Miami Queens are highly competitive and probably very proud of their craft. Right. And so I think Maya was attempting to try to save her name or her face or her like family, whatever. Like, Yeah. That's fine. I mean, I agree. The moment that came out of her mouth and, and I was like, oh, really? Okay. Okay. Right. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see when you actually give 100%, I guess. Yeah. Were you giving 100% during the lip sync smackdown? So, yeah. Because, I mean, someone beat you if you're giving 100%. So, uh, right. That. Right. Gary, what about you? What's your first one? Um, <laughs> so, I'm trying to remember. I'm thinking this is from Booked and Blessed. I wrote mirror chit chat shade rama If I remember mm. correctly, it was the top four queens. I think it was booked and blessed, and they had quite the kiki while they were in front of the mirrors, and they yes. were putting their their faces on, and were just yeah. cutting up back and forth. And right. I wanted to recognize it because this is drag culture. This is the stuff that people don't really see, especially if you're not familiar with the the drag community. What you see is what is produced and presented. Like you go to the gig, you see them perform, they do Mm -hmm. all their things, 
Like, you give them right. money. You should be giving them money. And tip your local drag queens. <laughs> tip your fucking drag queens. Especially your local girls. Not that the real girls don't need money. Tips too, but yeah. But, but you know, yeah. they're already getting paid because of the, you know, fame, quote unquote, of being a drag, of a real girl. So, yeah, the thing for me is, like, you don't see that camaraderie, like, that connection mm -hmm kind of stuff and this has been a criticism in the decade and a half that the american series has been around that like when there's a rivalry that's filmed and shown and sometimes produced that the lay audience doesn't get that they don't understand that like yeah well there's a banter or there's a bickering it's not necessarily true or like for a lifetime like like sometimes it is but more often than not like there's a play and so, like, look at Alyssa and Coco and right. the infamous, like, girl, look at how fucking orange you are. Like, like, while that while people might not see that as like shade or tea, you know, and, and understand that kind of thing, like it was a heated moment, but it wasn't like this serious thing. And so in that moment, when these queens are going back and forth, I just really appreciated like it was kind of like opening another door for the audience to see mm -hmm. that like you can actually like kick back and make fun of each other and like have a good time and pick on each other and it's like not that big a deal because that's yeah. that's part of the the community aspect the personality of being a drag queen is to being able to say things about your sisters your brothers like your family members of the same mm -hmm. community and everybody understands and like it's not that serious yeah one of the things I, if, I know exactly what we're talking about because i wrote it down and I actually started um nymphia says the love language of the of drag queens is throwing shade mm -hmm. yeah i remember her saying that and i was like that is very kind of true like right and, and if you're not a part of the lgbtqia plus community because it's not exclusive to drag. It happens quite often within the community, mostly within drag, mostly with gay men, quote unquote. But it happens beyond those borders. Um, and I think it also happens outside of our own community. It happens in the workplace. It happens in other areas. Um, I'm going to make an observation, and I realize this is going to be very questionable, but... As a white male, I believe, at least media has shown me, that black women have a like affinity for speaking truth to each other and like having no problem calling each other out on things, which to me, yeah. there's similarity if it is not the same thing. It just may right. not be called like given the same, same name or label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can say that, you know, I can see that as someone who has been mostly around women and black women his life. Um, my aunts and my mom kind of around each other, mm -hmm. like the conversation that they have are very real and very genuine and very can sometimes be kind of funny and, and cutting. And that's sort of the way it is. It doesn't mean that they, they hate each other. It right. just is a way to show their love and, you know, have fun. No, and I, so I think that was nice to see in that moment that, like, they are, like, their own self-chosen family and can have fun with each other. Um, and if you're not a part of that or you've not been in that or involved in it, that I think it's just good that people recognize or can see that it's a thing. Agreed. Um, in that case. All right, so uh, back to you. What's your other nerve for? Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Motherfucking Sasha Colby. Like, mm. just, just come on. Like, she came back into that finale. First, she did a performance. Like, I don't, I don't know why, but like, sure. Okay. 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 So let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, the Sasha Colby gets to do a whole number. Right? Yeah. I'm not mad about it. No, not at all. But but did you watch the pit stop? Yes. Oh my god, Monet 
killing me when she was like, what is with this, like, teasing, edging, like, performance <laughs> thing? Oh, she zips down. Then she zips back up. Oh, then she zips back down. Oh, then she zips back up. I was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, well, it is international television, Monet. Like, mm-hmm. like this is not in a club where she probably would have taken a whole outfit off and had pasties. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, a, you know, a little something below. Like, yeah, she's not doing yeah. that for there. Yeah. They may have they may have clocked her because like they're like, ma'am, I mean, we saw your outfit in the finale last year and we're like, mm, that was cutting it a little close. Yeah. Cutting a little too close. Can yeah. we cover up just a little bit? It's OK. It's OK. But then then then. Yes. Let's talk about that. She comes out for the, you know, the finale in this goddess outfit. Like, that's the only way I can describe mm-hmm. it. With rhinestones and like a crownish kind of thing, with like the like Viking like you know feather kind of thing going, and she had motherfucking earrings mm-hmm. as her motherfucking pasties on her ear on her on her breastuses. Like I just come on, like I know. I know, love love it, just so so fucking good. Just so amazing. And the outfit was stunning. And oh yeah. Ah, oh, she just like this is why she is who she is. And I live for it anytime I can. But you know, it, uh, just the nerve. That's why I said the nerve. The nerve right. of her. Just fuck. Wow. Foul. Not worthy. Absolutely. Just, yeah. No, it was yeah. it was so good. Like when she came out of that final reveal outfit, and the first thing you clock is the big ass dangly earrings, which is so drag. Like if you know anything about big drag, like oh yeah, earrings are the size of bracelets. I mean, <laughs> like they are just redunk, and yeah. and so like the fact that she had the longest dangling earrings a drag queen has ever seen. I loved how. Trixie and Monet were losing their shit about those and how they were so long and perfectly placed and they were basically pasties to cover up the tatas. I was like, yes, the queen, mm-hmm. Sasha Colby would do that, deserves to do that, could get away with that. Like, and, mm-hmm. and, and my favorite thing is if anyone has ever done it before, no one will remember and no one will ever be able to do it again. Right. So there you go. It was it was, it was damn good. Oh, yes, just gorgeous. Yeah, there we go. Step down, look. Thank you. You spoiler. I don't care. Oh, this picture. Oh, it's on. It's on Reddit. Just. Oh, anyway. <laughs> just looking again and just having a moment. <laughs> it's just so fucking stunning. Anywho. Um, Gary, oh, yeah. so oh, yeah, oh. we we have to talk about this part, Megami Mania. So if you didn't see the lip sync SmackDown, you missed a hell of a show, mm-hmm. and you missed a queen who had nothing to lose, supposedly everything to prove, like slay other queens. Oh yes. My favorite part of that whole thing is after it airs, and I, di- I didn't see the Twitter, but I heard about it great many times, so I'm taking it at his word. Megami got so much online tip money from the f- lip sync SmackDown. She posted and said, I paid off my drag race debt with all the tip <laughs> money that she got. That people like gave her the flowers like as actual coins online. Like to her yeah. Venmo or her Cash App or whatever because of what she did in in the finale or in the um, lip sync, and I was like, "Good, good on you!" Like, yeah. she deserved it because she, I mean, yeah, Mama, the fact that she in the lip sync simulated sex acts, like to a share song. Like, and the moment she started doing that, I was screaming. I nearly was crying because I was like, how can she not win? Like, 
you the absurdity, the humor of that. And I was like, oh, she totally has this in the bag now. Like, you cannot take that and be serious with it because it's a kooky song. And so, you know, and I still. I'm kind of mixed on that outcome the, the at the end. I'm not going to say that Morphine didn't deserve to win. But, like, <laughs> I was waiting for, like, the ultimate upsets of upsets. Mm. You know? Like. Right. So, that being said, she she definitely seemed to have a bit of a redemptive arc. Now, I will say this. For those that don't know. All I'm going to say, I'm going to be a little bit vague. There is an alter alternative account on a social media platform that I may have discovered by accident that I am following. And said account put up a post that said, well, I was thinking about not doing drag anymore, but I guess I'm back in the rig or something like that. And it was because of what happened with the Lip Sync Smackdown. And I was like, okay. Mm. So <laughs> that being said, like, like I was like, all right, but I, I mean, I, I think it was definitely well deserved, and she proved that she right. has talent, and, um, yeah, and is like is cerebral, like as a thinker, like went through and was like, okay, what about this song? What is the thing I can do with this? And blah blah blah, like seriously prepared for mm -hmm. that particular episode. Yeah. Um, and what to do with it. And so I hear you when she predicted, and this is the part I think that sold it so well to the audience, was she was standing at the front of the stage. And Maya is behind her. And you can't really see that well behind you what the other person's doing. So she took a risk in a moment of the lip sync to predict what Maya was doing. And mm -hmm. the, the hand walking split, like, imitation thing was such, like, a, a, a sealed coffin moment. Like, the moment she did right. that, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, she just called Maya out as, like, a predictable trick pony who does these very specific things. And this is the thing you should expect in this moment. And it happened. Had she done that and it didn't happen, you'd kind of look foolish. But you got blessed with Lady Luck or whatever you want to call it, that she predicted it and it all coincided. And I was like, all right, yeah. girl. So I, Megami deserves all, all the credit and the recognition because it do take nerve to come back to the lip sync and be like, I'm going to do what I do and to have the confidence of that and like to really, really like she did so well. She did so well. Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved it. There's a, sorry, thanks for, I was reading, um, actually, we'll get in, let's, let's keep going, because I kind of talk about this later anyway, so. Well, so, this is the thing, before we get into our next segment, I want to, like, pedal back, because I think in pre-show I was talking, like, there were some things I wanted to talk about. Okay. So, one of the things I want to um, talk about is the, the reunion and the finale setup. It was a, mm. it was a, it was a altered interior space. So right. we had a very different stage. It was like Pentagon shaped, like the video wall had been updated, the way the audience was placed and sat. Like it was, it was a level up. I actually liked it, but it made me wonder, was this special or is this a new thing? Like, yeah. will the next All-Star season have the same stage setup and stuff. I don't know. Um, that being said, I have a question for you, Damon. We mm -hmm. knew a month ago, roughly, what the final mm -hmm. episode sequence was going to be. Like, I we were, I think we were off air. I was searching online because we were talking about the schedule and we were trying to figure out, like, when are we recording and when are the shows going up? And right, I right, found right. on one obscure site the episode listings and titles. It didn't really give descriptions, but we knew that it was going to come down to Booked and Blessed, a Lip Sync Smackdown reunion, and a finale. Right. And then I was like, 
I kind of cheated a little and I saw that there were some Reddit threads discussing that the reunion and the lips and the finale had already been pre-recorded. That they were done in studio. It was not going to be live. It was not going to be in a theater. And there was some scuttlebutt about that. Right. So we kind of knew how this was going to play out, quote unquote, as far as the episodes and that stuff went. My question for you is, do you think there was a time gap between the end of filming and the reunion like there normally is? Because norm Mm -hmm. normally is air quotes. In the past, like, I don't know, half dozen seasons when they have the live theater production it is filmed like in may april usually right it's done in la it's at the orpheum or some theater like and so like it's all compact on the weekend it used to be the same weekend as la drag con which caused a bunch of issues for some queens but in the end like it was very much like months after the fact and i thought before watching them that the reunion and the finale were filmed right in sequence like as soon as they had done top four down to top three that was when they got the lip sync finale and that's when we got the actual finale but i don't i don't i didn't get that impression watching it that that there was it was done like immediately after correct so because who had those outfits at the ready Right. For the, the lip sync or for right. the top three to have looks mm-hmm. that were not repeated anywhere else and then to have completely different things for the beginning of the finale and then their single numbers for the finale plus the right. last looks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there was a lot of that. I, I'm i very curious. I don't again, I don't think it was done. I don't think it was done like immediately after. I don't think that would have been the case. I do mm-hmm. think it was, I would love to know for sure, but I think it may have been done last year. If that, you know, like before it's before we started airing. Okay. I I'm kind of having that feeling either it started before we started airing mm-hmm. or it started. It was very early this year something along those lines because it doesn't feel like there's it does feel like time passed Mm -hmm. because we see a lot of glow ups but not a lot of time has passed because you can see that some queens the glow up isn't as dramatic like i would say for example a mandatory meeting would probably have done a bit more than what we saw Mm. in a in a way you know just because she looked very much like slightly it elevated considering this was the finale. Um, well, yeah. So I have a sub theory. What if the lip sync SmackDown was in sequence right after Booked mm-hmm. and Blessed, but then there was a hiatus before the finale? Because I do think a mandatory meeting stepped up r- distinctly um, between the reunion and the finale. Okay. Yeah. It's possible. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how much time. Yeah. I mean, because uh, what, well, normally they would what film in the summer. So they'd probably be done like in, in July or August. And then mm-hmm. they wouldn't do the reunion until the next like May. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Like three quarters of a year has gone by before, but normally quote unquote, Right. Where in this case, I agree with you. Like it might have been just a couple months, half, yeah, maybe half a year, I don't maybe know. half a year, just for the queens to get like looks and what have you, because they also had the red, white, and blue thing for the that's right moment. That's right. And um, so they had to get that together, yeah. and yeah, um. And then obviously the finale queens, the final three, the top three, I should say, had to come up with looks for the things that they're doing. Right. You know, the lip sync and the uh, should they win their right. you know, the second lip sync. Right. So it just and you have to come up with things that are you know probably doing like reveals and et cetera, et cetera. So it's right. You have to have some time 
to make that happen. It couldn't have just like the. I'll, it doesn't look like these were looks that they brought with them. Right. No, I agree. This does. None of this looks like looks that were brought with them. This looks like we had time to call designers and get something made, and that's what we did. Agreed. That's what it looks like. But yeah, who knows? That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna save my final thing for. Either the very, very end, or we'll see. So, you ready to move on to our next sure thing segment? Okay. All right, so this is Snaps and Eye Rolls. These are the hits and misses from these particular episodes that stood out to us, aka the highs and the lows. So, who are you giving snaps to, Damon? Or for um, Megami Triumphant is what I wrote down, and that's mm-hmm. sort of why. I felt, we talked about it a little bit earlier, and it's just sort of very true. I felt like the underdog was well represented, and while she didn't win the whole thing, mm-hmm. she surprised us. She provided great entertainment, and as we've seen, it's been good for her in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. and she posted apparently because i found it on reddit thank you reddit because this shit you know always the thing it says megami had the reddit thread is megami had a plan and it reads i'm gonna read it i really went into this lala with a plan for every possibility i picked janet because i knew q had her titty reveal and would not use it in a song about domestic abuse uh, I perform that share song all the time, and I knew that I could make it funny and campy against anyone. I knew Maya fucking hated that Go-Go song, and we had a stronger storyline together. I brought the hand puppet thing because I just knew I couldn't outdance Morphine, so I went for funny. Baby lip-syncing four times in a row, I was exhausted, but I am also proud of myself. I honestly just wanted to win one round and then go sit in the back and get drunk. <laughs> but this was so much better. Yeah. And I think that's just, she was very smart. And I think, again, like we didn't take, give her a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a lot of people calling her to Eeyore or drag. And I'm like, ah. she was very kind of mopey. And I will say that in the season, but She's also very cerebral, like you said, very thinking, always thinking about things. And that showed so much in this um, lip sync, right? in the lip syncs. Um, And you don't really get that unless you have an opportunity to show it, which is kind of what happened here. Right. So I, I'm so, I, I have a new, higher amount of respect for Megami than I did prior. And I feel like that had a lot to do with now getting to know how she works. Mm-hmm. Cause she's one of these queens that's thinking and, and sometimes, yeah, you can very easily go for the cheap, you know, ha ha ho ho joke. But when you really think about it and start getting, getting into it, it becomes very, it has the potential to become very magical. And that's what I felt happened here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. hundred, hundred, hundred percent that agreed. Right. Agreed. Um, for me, I want to give snaps to mother's photo shoot advice. A bunch of people t- already talked about this online and I, I want to reiterate or like give my agreement when mama Roo was helping them do the book covers Mm-hmm. I was so pleased to see her giving them the advice on like positioning, body posture, like things to think about, what you're doing. Like, and it was kind of obvious that some of them love doing a photo shoot and have had the experience before. So they know kind of what they want to do. But even then, she was still giving them advice. And this is a person who has spent decades in the in the entertainment business and has been down this road many a time. And so I just I really yes. More of that. Like 
it's sad that it took to the top four for us to see a moment like that where they were giving stuff. I mean, we got it. It's weird. I just realized we sort of got that back in the very beginning with the DMV photo shoot. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the same thing. That was very campy. That was like silly and funny with T.S. Madison at their side and and that kind of stuff. Um, Right. And so I just I would like to see in future seasons more of like mother like mothering like you know giving advice and helping mm-hmm. with stuff in that agreed case. all right yeah. eye rolls <laughs> i think we kind of are in the same genre of thinking in this all i'm gonna say is but... if this bitch got a nickel for every time someone talked about her she'd be like richer than the, everybody else on the whole damn season right but what i wrote down is get over her plane like and i don't know how else to say it other than that Mm -hmm. i don't know i genuinely do not know what amanda did to make you so against her i i genuinely don't know because it seems very much like you had you had had it out for her from like the moment you saw her Mm mm-hmm and I just I I really just want to say get the fuck over her like right, right. she's to to keep it blunt you two are not going to be in the same realm and competition ever again like no offense but like mm. you're just not right. like I don't I don't know how else to put it or say it um, your realms are very different. Your drag is very different. There is nothing really competition-wise that you're going to be clashing, as it were, other than this. Right. Um, and it just got to the point where, yeah, it was it was in the the SmackDown when they came back. Pretty sure. Boop, 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 going back over here, looking at my notes, going over here to this page. Yeah, because um, Jane had comments when she was mm-hmm. sitting in the workroom watching. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, it's just one of these things where, like, it, you, you, there was no need for it. And it, again, it seems to be, is it, like, a defense mechanism? Mm. Like, it feels to me, for whatever reason, you are threatened by her. Because that's what it comes off as. Right, right. We saw it happen with Jinx and Roxy all the way back then. Like, there is something, for whatever reason, that you feel is you're threatened by. And that's right. what it's coming off as. So as opposed to maybe talking out or whatever, you tend to just go ahead and attack. And it just doesn't feel right. pleasant. And I know Amanda doesn't particularly care, but I care. Because I feel like you are doing this intentionally, and I feel like that's never good. Right. If you had a reason to be antagonistic towards her, I would maybe be okay-ish with it. Right. But this isn't the, like we were talking about before, this isn't the shade, like, love kind of thing that we we were talking about earlier. This is very much intentional antagonizing. Right. So. I hear you on that. Yeah. Um, So along those lines, what I wrote down as my eye rolls (laughs) is the editing shade with Amanda versus Plane. Yeah. So in the finale, and this is all on World of Wonder. Like, this is on the Mm -hmm. edit. This is absolutely, like, why it's an eye roll. Right. It's an absolute piece of bullshit that – so Plane does her single number, and, of course, there's a camera on Amanda. But the edit is that the camera shoots – Quotes on quote unquote a new camera angle appears and it's on Amanda's face and it is resting bitch face, not not pleased, not interested, not phased, not nothing. 
Mm-hmm. And did you watch the the final three seeing the series finale? I did, yes. Yeah. And how, like, Safira was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, she was like, she knew the instant she saw that, that that was shenanigans. Like, and I think Nymphia... And I think Plain knew also that it was production shenanigans, that that Amanda would have not done that. Right. Like, Amanda knows all too well the game that is being played between the two of them and that they're being, like, edited to be a more heightened war when, in fact, there isn't. And right. that it had kind of really died down and wasn't that much of a thing anymore. And yet production does that. I mean, when I saw that, I was, I mean, I literally, I think out loud was like, what the fuck was that? Like, come <laughs> on. Totally uncalled for. Totally, 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 just, totally uncalled for. It just feels, like I said, it just felt unnecessary. It yeah. just felt like, do we really, in the finale, do we really need to keep this beef going? Well, and then. Do we really need to keep it, like. And what doesn't help is plain then in the final three seeing the finale live. Played played is dressed like the like the wicked witch from Into the Woods. I don't know what that was about. I it's thought some, that... like if you saw like there's there's a picture of her. She's some I'm assuming it's some sort of Russian like oh, okay. like folk tales, you know, fairy okay. tale, whatever. Because the the yeah, the it did... look beforehand. She's like she actually has like a whole house in her hands and her face are in it. Like it's a piece on her. Oh, I yeah. don't, again, I don't 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 ask me what it is. Don't ask me what it is about. No, no, but, no. It, it definitely not... it definitely has a Hans Christian Andersen Grimm's fairy yeah. tale kind of aspect to it. Exactly. Anyways, that being said, like when that happened, I think Plain felt cornered by production to react to it and the problem is it's like improv like she had to yes and or at least i think she felt she had to yes and it to respond to it not like stop for a moment and just take stock of it because one of the best reactions would have been to not react mm -hmm. and just stare and then like lock eyes with the camera and just look dead into it and not do anything Right. But she did. Be like, and. Mm. Right. So um, I just I just thought that that was all editing shade. I was not happy about that. So there's that. OK, so uh, we're pretty much at the end of the, the show. Before we get into closing, I do want to talk. I wouldn't do want to swing back around because David and I had kind of mentioned that I had a theory that it was predicted and given away as to who would win at a certain moment. And it was during the finale. Right. So right. I think you know what I might be getting at. So we have yeah. the we have the final three, the top three, and they do their solo numbers. And then we find out who Mama Ru has decided, quote unquote, to be the final two. Uh, I was honestly surprised that it turned out to be Nymphia versus Safira. Okay. For some reason, even though I didn't even though I think Nymphia's performance deserved it, I just thought they were gonna pick plain really to go against Safira. I don't know why I felt like the narrative was that Nymphia was going to not make top two. I just don't know why. Mm -hmm. So that moment happens. Right. And then both of them have to go backstage. They have to get ready for the next thing. And plain has to graciously accept defeat, which was a little right. awkward when you are so eagle and ego Statistical and full of yourself and you think that you're going to win and then you don't win it is it is probably a little bitter that humble pie that you have to eat baby so oh yeah there was that so then we move ahead and we end up with congeniality happening and uh so uh malaysia baby doll fox shows up okay girl i just want to talk about this outfit for just like five seconds did she spend all of her Olay congeniality like win dollars last year on this year's outfit? <laughs> she walks out covered head to toe in feathers. Like this whole gown thing. And I was like, bitch, how much coin did you spend on that dress? Like, 
that was wild. That was a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they announced for the first time ever that there is a tie for congeniality. Right. And they announced Tsunami, which I was a little surprised at. But to be fair, they said that the Queens did the voting. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yay. Congrats on you, girl, because you didn't necessarily do that great in the reunion. Um, So, like, and I questioned your outfit that you were wearing. Anyways, like, I just, it, yeah. it was very, it was, it was very, a weird outfit. it was very art. It was very fashion. I personally didn't care for it. I was like, what are we trying to say with the silhouette? Anyways. um, And then they announce who the other Thai person is. I would like to understand the production on what was happening in that moment in the background, because that was interesting. So they announced Safira, and she has to come running out from the back of the Mm -hmm. stage in a dressing gown and a head wrap, because she is apparently in the midst of getting ready for her final number. Right. I think that was the giveaway. Oh, how could you win both overall and congeniality? Mm. That's what I meant when I said it took a while until later. And I was like, oh, right. I think they gave it away. And mm. and so for those that uh, for somehow don't know. <laughs> it's Nymphia and Saphira that go into the final lip sync battle head to head. And Nymphia wins. Nymphia wind wins. <laughs> I just realized how that sounded a second ago. Um, it appears they did what they've done in the past where they filmed multiple endings. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because when they showed the queens watching live, it seemed slightly that they did not know who of the two was going to win. Right. But I will say this. I think Safira knew that she didn't win. So, and Nymphia seemed genuinely shocked that she did win. Right. And I mean in the in the watching of the live show. Um but I just I I mean the more I thought about it I was like how could how could you? Like how could you I mean not that she wouldn't have deserved it. But how mm-hmm. could you give her the congeniality and the win? You know what I mean? Like, I, I think yeah. it's an unspoken rule that that's just not a thing. And it's possible. Like, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to go back to, like, not necessarily pageant, but, like, other, like, talent shows and what have you where congeniality is sort of, it's very rarely that it's the same. It's the same. It's very rare that it's the same. But it can happen especially in this situation when right. congeniality is voted on by the Queens and not like say the public. Right. And it could be anyone in, in the show. So. Yeah. 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 I could see it happening, but it would take a lot. Yeah. Cause again, uh, uh, a congeniality in like a in a pageant or what have you, I think feel is oftentimes the one who has been more the most gracious and most, you know, mm-hmm. caring and um like when we do uh what I did NAB, um, we don't have it's not Miss Congeniality, it's it's a different award of like a right. um spirit of the anyway. Um but that's voted on by the other contestants and Mm -hmm. the person that gets it usually wins. Like the person that gets it doesn't always win. Like that has been the case often. So, right. So I, I mean, I just felt like looking back on it, I was like, yeah, if I'd really thought about it in the moment that Safira won and it made me wonder if Safira also thought the same thing that very day during filming, Mm. because it was just my gut feeling when Safira and Nymphia performed their final number head to head. 
I felt like Nymphia put it all out on the stage, but Sephira didn't. Mm. Hmm. Like, I feel like Nymphia put 100% out there, and I felt like Sephira put out, like, 85% yeah. maybe. Like, I just didn't feel like she put it all out there. And this is all hindsight. Like, this is all, like, reflective thinking. And I'm like, well, Agreed. maybe she thought because she won congeniality, that was the clue. Like, that was the tip-off. Like, you're not going to win, girl. It. And so she's like, yeah. well, then I'm not going to, you know, try to win. I'm not going to give my all. Yeah. I don't know. And I could see, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to necessarily believe that, but I also could see where that would be the thought. We had, Jim had actually commented that wouldn't it be funny if he won both? And I was like, well, I mean, it, it could, it's doable. It could happen. It just, it would be odd. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So Nymphia Wind did actually like win the entire competition. And the reason why I say that is because it's kind of groundbreaking. She's a foreign born queen and has been like very much putting her culture of Taiwan into her performances, into her looks, talked about it openly, like in why it would be important if she won. Her mom was there. Like, I mean, it was just a lot of stuff. And so, yeah, like it, it's definitely another another iteration of like groundbreaking in some fashion, some way. Like, so, um, and I'm not saying in any way or shape or form that she didn't deserve to win. Um, I just know for me personally, I had, <laughs> I had my heart set on Safira, but mm -hmm. there may there may have been some element of production that they think they may get Safira for All Stars in the future. I think Q is a, is an absolute. I think Morphine is an absolute. I think Plane is probably a guarantee. They just have yeah. to choose to do it. Saphira, on the other hand, I could see kind of going the path of some other queens. Like, I think about Thorgy. And, right. like, who, like, is talented musically and was like, eh. Like I'll do I'll do something it'll be fun but I like I want to do this other thing I want to go in a different direction like I've heard some some conjecture online that people would love to see Monet and Safira do a tour that they perform opera and drag mm. which I'm like girl I might drop some coin to watch two black queens like build it out some <laughs> right, some right. opera like that would be interesting and different you know what. Add, add, now that I mention it, add Thorgy into that. Make that bitch, that's not the right way to say that. It would be great to have Thorgy come out and play, like, you know, on stage with them somehow. <laughs> wow, make that bitch. <laughs> Rewind, take that one back. Um, like but a, you know what a, I mean? A, a drag classical, like something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And while we're at it, put Dadali out there on ice. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> there, are, there are genuine queens who have crazy good talent skills that deserve like the recognition in those areas that they do those things. So anyways, um, yeah, like, I, I mean, so I just thought that that was interesting the way the, the finale shook out um, and that there might've been a bit of a tip off as to how it went down. That being said, Nymph, like here's, here's the numbers real quick as we get ready to wrap up. Oh yeah. I saw that. Nymphia wind took home $218,950. Wow. The most money. Like, obviously, in total, Sephira Cristal did come in at second with $60,400. Third place went to Morphine with $52,700 oh. because of the reunion money. Mm. And then we jumped to Plain Jane, who had uh, $45,100 plus $5,000 worth of product. And yes, I broke out the product on purpose. Um, and then... After that, who do we go to after the top four? I think we end up okay, going. Class. Oh, tsunami. Possibly. Um... Is that Q? Well, then Q. So after, yeah, after playing, or yeah, oh, after playing J, then Q. Here. And then, yeah, you're right. Like it comes down to uh, tsunami because of the congeniality. Um, so everybody got some coin. I mean, even. Hershey, Mirage, and Amanda at the bottom 
who had nothing until the very end, they also got the additional two thousand dollars. Right. So it was a little something in total. The winnings for the season: four hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred dollars in cash, a five thousand dollar value makeup package, a trip to Spain in gifts, and a trip to Puerto Vallarta. So in theory, they could have cleared half a mil the season in total. Wow. It was making me laugh how Monet and Trixie were kind of talking about like, like how they were just like giving money out left and right. Like everybody gets something this season. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um so that's season sixteen. Uh congrats to Nymphia Wind on truly presenting one of the most complete, creative, competitive, well crafted packages in years um, yeah hey she made it yeah. to, she made it to the end and she and she won and i'm yeah. you know i'm very happy for her i'll be curious to see you know what the the coming year brings for all of them in that case uh any final thoughts as we get ready to to close out here mm. not really Okay. I may save it for a post, but I, I, yeah, congratulations. I think, I think overall there was a very fun story there with Nymphia that I kind of enjoyed. I very much enjoyed, let me rephrase, but I think I'll say some more stuff in post. That's fine. So with that being said, if you have thoughts, be right can, back. Actually, you can <laughs> let us know what those things are. You can go to our blog, which is cubsoutloud.com. You can send us an email, which is cubsoutloud at gmail.com. You can leave us a voicemail. Call in. Tell us what your thoughts are. Leave a little recording. You can call 361-265-8255. That's 361-COL-TALK. If you want to find us online, you can type in Cubs Out Loud as one word. If you want to uh, join the COL entourage, you can go to tinyurl.com slash telegram hyphen C-O-L-D-R. You can also find out when we're going to be doing our regular show as a live uh, production recording to YouTube. That'll be listed on our online Google Calendar. You can find that at tinyurl.com slash calendar hyphen C-O-L. If you want to support us uh, here at Cubs Out Loud, there are several ways to do that. As you may have been seen, if you're watching us on YouTube, we have different merch items available from a distressed hat. Uh, we have all sorts of apparel items. I happen to be wearing actually our consent is my foreplay bear pride shirt. Um, Cause unfortunately uh, Papa has to do the laundry. He doesn't have his drag race stuff <laughs> at the ready. Um, as Damon is uh, showing us, there is a consent for my foreplay t-shirt variation, which is in the drag pride colors. And then we also have uh, cups, uh, a handy rag, um, all sorts of things. And there are different designs. Some of them are Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo. Some of them are the regular Cubs Out Loud Drag or Cubs Out Loud logo. Also, if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud for a dollar or more a month. Um, you get uh, the full shows, which include what we call the bookends, um, plus other special items. And there are some rewards uh, that will be going out soon <laughs> to folks. Or if you just want to make a, a donation, you can give us a tip, a one-time donation. You can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can pretty... those dollars, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you can pretty much uh, listen to our audio version of this particular podcast for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. Anywhere that you uh, get your podcasts, you want to look for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race specifically, um, and you'll find that. Damon, if folks want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most fair related sites are on Facebook. And you can find me as Pup underscore Ember on Twitter. Our pup number seven nine on Blue Sky. Both of those are not safe for work. For the safe for work, you can do DMA Gamer seven nine on Twitter or TikTok. Nice. If you want to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber seven three. Um, I do have a Twitter account that I created specifically for drag stuff, so I could avoid the spoilers, and that's uh Gabber seven three. That's G A R B E A R seven three D R A G. So it's Gabber seventy three drag. And with that, uh, we'll be back at some point uh, when there's another show. Stay tuned on that. Or who knows, we might do a special Marshall out of the blue, unpredicted for some other <laughs> random reason. You never know. Hey, it'll be exciting when it happens, right? Indeed. 
So with that, we will say goodbye for now. Bye-bye.